In this video, I'm going to be unboxing the Bad Dogs Audio Spider Preamp, DI, and Reamp box. Hey guys, thank you for tuning into the channel once again. Today I'm going to be looking at the Bad Dogs Audio Spider. So Bad Dogs Audio are a company based in Italy. Uh, Francesco, the guy behind them, reached out to me and said, Hey, I've got this product and um, I'd like you to show it on your channel. Give it a go, give it a review. Uh, and so that's exactly what I'm doing. The company only has three products at the minute and this is one of those three listed on their website. And uh, it's a three-in-one product in itself. Uh, so it's a preamp, so it's going to be able to colour your sound. It's also a DI box, so you can get a nice clean uh, mic level signal out of your bass and into something like your audio interface, into your mixer. And it's also a reamp box, which means you can send signals out from something like Logic, out of your DAW, uh, back out, give them a colour, send them to an amplifier, record that, and then take it back into your DAW. And so it's a really versatile product and a really useful product for someone like me who uh, works in a studio environment a lot of the time. So what I'm going to do with this product is today I'm just going to unbox it. So we're going to take it out of the box, see what's in the box, have a look at it, plug it in with a bass and see what it does just a little bit. Uh, and then in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do a full on review. I really want to test all of the features of it. So it's going to be a bit more of an intense review than normal. And um, there'll be more sections to it. Um, so for that reason, I'm just going to do an unboxing today. And uh, Let's see what this new little product can do. So this is the box that the product comes in. I'm waving it about. Um, this is the box that the product comes in. As you can see, nice, clean, plain uh, package. But some of the benefits written on the package, of course, uh, the preamp stage is class A. It's got DI output, uh, the amp, reamp output, uh, two distinct analog sound emulators. I'm really intrigued to try those out. I really want to try those. I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, quarter inch jack input that will take both balanced and unbalanced signals uh, so that will allow you to put your mixer type signal or your instrument signal into it no problem uh, a quarter inch output to an amplifier or a tuner and then two XLR outputs which both have different functions which is cool so opening the box first things we have a quick guide um, so that's quick guide with all the different features and different parts of the box um, so hopefully that'll be self-explanatory, but if I need it, it's there. Uh, we get a sticker, always cool. Then lifting up this piece of foam. Uh, power adapter in this little box here. Um, this one is a European one. Um, as Francesco said to me that he just didn't have any UK ones at the minute. Um, but fortunately I've got an adapter, so it's all cool. One thing about the adapter is it's an AC 12 volt adapter, which is the opposite of most music gear. Um, so a lot of music gear is 12 volt DC, um, center negative, and this is 12 volt AC. So just be sure to make sure that you're using the correct type of power supply with it. Uh, that makes it a little bit more awkward. Uh, it means you're probably gonna have to have either the supplied power supply or be very sure of what you're doing with it. Uh, I know a lot of things like pedal boards, um, the Chox ones, you can get adapters that switch it to AC and things like that. Um, but yeah, just something to mention. Maybe a slight downside for me, um, but all the same. And then the box itself, a lot smaller than I actually thought it would be. I thought it would be bigger than this, um, but there you go. You've actually seen it before I have, because I've not actually seen the front of it. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's a lot smaller. It's all a lot smaller. But I suppose that's actually really useful, because if this is a DI, you want it to be put in a cupboard. Uh, well, in our studio, you have it in a cupboard. Um, and it makes it really simple, you just stack them on top of each other and you go to get the one out you need. If it takes up a load of space, it's a bit inconvenient really. Um, but yeah, really solid, it's it's a DI box, it's really built like a DI box and if you've seen a DI box before, you kind of know what it's built like. Um, we've got the on off switch here, it's really small. Um, the input gain signal uh, level here. The two emulators which are cool, they've got a feeling label on them. Um, but one's tape and one's synth. The tape one's going to give you a tape type sound, supposedly. So a kind of saturation, um, a warming of the sound, maybe a top end roll off, maybe a bottom end roll off to kind of switch the sound in. That's what I think a tape thing should sound like. So let's see. And then the synth one is a harmonic exciter. So it's got harmonic content to it. Maybe exciter is not the specific word. Um, let me have a look at the manual actually. 
kind of what I said. So the tape switch activates tape simulation circuitry on the preamp signal path. So that, to my head, is going to be doing something like an Empirical Labs Fatso. Uh, and that's something that I use on bass all the time when I'm mixing now, which is really cool because it saturates certain areas of the signal, warms it up, and makes it a lot more easily heard on smaller speakers. So that might have a really cool place when you're recording, uh, and maybe also as a mix tool. And secondly, we've got the synth switch. So the synth switch, as I mentioned, that's a harmonic generator on the circuit. So it's not an exciter, it's a generator. Um, so to me, that sounds like it's going to add uh, some additional harmonics to the sound. Again, that should help with clarity being heard in a mix uh, and definitely give it a different colour as well. So really interested to plug those in and try them on bass now. Then the next switch on the front is the reamp button. So I think that changes the level so it works the other way round. Um, so plug it in and that goes to the amp signal. Um, so that'll send the signal straight to the amp. Um, or if you have it turned off, you've got a DI signal, so it'll go into the input and then straight back out to the amp. So you can plug in your instrument uh, in the front and then still have the signal go to your amplifier. And that signal on the front will then go to either this DI output here, which should be after the color, I believe. So this is a post uh, everything, post everything in this box, DI signal out. And then a pre output, which will take the signal from does your clean bass signal straight back out. So that's a pure direct box at that point. Last thing on the back is that we have the Bad Dogs logo and also a design and engineered in Italy. So this is built in Italy, um, straight to your doorstep. So that's it for the device. The only other thing to mention is that there's a signal, little LED there, uh, and that is going to go from green, which is minus 20 dBU, uh, to yellow, which is zero, and then plus 16 is into the red. Um, I'm really excited to try it. I'm going to go and plug it in, plug it in a base, and uh, see what the difference is. So in the time it took me to set up the bad dog running through uh, instrument into the DI and then out of this amp output into my Aguilar here. Uh, I've also gained uh, a small cat. Uh, so we've got the dog and the cat together. Um, but let's run through the different sounds that we can get from these two different feeling buttons. Um, it's just a starting point and then in the full review I'll look at a bit more into the clean DI signal out as well as the reamp functionality of the box. But as you can see, quite small uh, and in comparison to this which is my Avalon uh, U5DI, obviously very very different in terms of their size uh, and kind of different in terms of what they should do in flavour. This is very very clean and clear uh, and you get a bit of weight from the transformers in it. Uh, but this spider here is redesigned to be more of a coloration box. So let's see. I think it's off at the minute. Um, just running into the box with it turned off and then into the Aguilar. Pretty much the same, maybe a touch more high end, but it just running in the signal path. Could be my imagination, uh, could be my playing, but I think there might be a touch more top end definition there. At the minute you're getting through this through a Shaw MV camera attached to my iPhone, so you're going to be getting a little bit of the room, but in the proper demo I'll make sure that it's a proper mic cabinet uh, and obviously the DI signal. So let's try the tape button. Um, so this is without actually. Then with the tape engaged. Slightly compressed. It's really nuanced though. It's a very, very nuanced change in the sound. Just want to see if that low end changes as well. Yeah, there's a bit of a change in the low end from, to my ear. 
it's a tiny bit tighter, not as much super, super low end. Just brings the mid-range forward a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, we're talking really small amount. Just stops it sounding quite so much like a direct sound. Um, really, really small amounts though. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. I can imagine if you could just sprinkle that onto pretty much all your tones, you'd, you'd love it. And I think that's probably the idea. It's meant to be just a little bit of colour. So let's try the synth one now. Synth engaged. That's really cool. Uh, it's somehow just kind of, well, not dissimilar to things like uh, Waves Max Bass, the plugin, and the um, what else is there? I think something like maybe the Vertigo uh, plugin by Plugin Alliance. Um, Waves Vitamin, Vitamin if you're English, but Vitamin if you're in the States. Um, that adds a bit of harmonic source uh, on the top and just it brings out a little bit of clarity to everything uh, without really changing the tone that much. It just adds this kind of light airiness to the tone. It just fills it out on the top end a bit more. So it sounds like it's kind of got a little bit closer to you. Uh, you can hear it a little bit better. Uh, and the bottom end stays... It's trying to change the balance of the tone. Uh, it kind of makes the, the bottom end seem like it kind of stays there and then the, the, the top and the mid just come up a little bit. Uh, and just makes it a little bit easier to hear a bit more definition in the sound. It's cool, it's interesting. Uh, it's something that I actually kind of was looking for anyway um, when trying to recreate kind of the bass tones that I get in my DAW, uh, mixing and recording, trying to get that kind of stuff out of the box. And I dare say that this, this might be the box that does it. Now, it looks like I can try both at the same time. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do clean signal, then the tape, and then the synth. To be honest, I doubt that this nuance is coming across through these speakers, but all I can give you is my perception and my take on it. And hopefully, in the full video, it'll be a little bit clearer and you can really... I'll do my, my AB um, the way I do my ABs and you'll be able to hear it a little bit more clearly. And hopefully you'll be able to hear that sound and the difference between the two. Okay, so back to um, just clean. I'll also try driving it a little bit more and see what happens as well in a sec. With the tape. And then with the synth as well. It's just the uh, it's the top end, it's the forwardness of the mid-range with the tape and then the a little bit more airiness in that kind of mid-range that just brings the sound further forward out of the speakers a little bit. Really discreet, but I actually really like it. I think it's a really cool thing. I've got a gig tomorrow, so I'm going to take it out with me and I'm going to try it there and see if I notice it in a mix and what the difference is there, uh, engaging it and not having it engaged. Uh, just turning up the input level a little bit and just see if that makes a difference as well.
yeah, combination. There's a little bit of a sacrifice in the clarity and the the the, the definition from the string, but that's a substitution for a little bit of more warmth, a little bit more of a kind of classy, uh, kind of pre-made, pre-mixed sound by using those buttons and. Yeah, I've got to say, I really like it. The signal uh, just adds more of that spider signal to it, so more of the colour. Um, so if you barely want any, you just pull it all the way back. And if you want plenty of it, you drive it all the way up to the top, and it will give you your different kind of tone. As I say, it's really nuanced, but I like it. So let's see. Uh, I think this could be the answer to those kind of plugins, those kind of things that you know, mix engineers have the ability to do that we don't really have the ability to do that as bass players. Um, so that's really cool. And obviously this has a place outside of just playing bass as well. You could use it on guitar. You could use it to run signals back out, run signals through it, uh, synthesizers in particular, um, and anything you want from your DAW to run out, anything that's too clean, run it out, give it a bit of character with this box and then send it back into your DAW. So those are some of the options you've got with it. I'll leave a link to the product in the description so you can check out the website. And that's it for this unboxing. Let me know your thoughts on this device and keep your eyes peeled for the full review in the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see that full review video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.